Okay, so enough of that. Let's get into it. So today's session is really about um, how pharmaceutical companies, CROs, and just generally in terms of um, how are we all um, harnessing the opportunities around cloud and big data. And so we're going to look at some specific case studies. We're going to look at some technologies, some opportunities, and some visions. And I think there's a lot happening in, in this particular area. Um, so let me just, uh, to help me with that, I'm going to introduce you to the panel. Uh, so we've got Tom Grunstrom here. He's VP of uh, Technologies from uh, Icon. Um, he's Vice President, um, and uh, his, his role is basically focuses on both phase one all the way through to late phase and developing solutions and services to support that. So very pleased to have Tom on the panel here today. And we also have Victor Lobanoff from Covance, who is Executive Director of Informatics. Um, the great thing about Victor, and I think this is a really interesting thing about the space that we're in now, is that I think Victor hasn't really come from a background of clinical data management per, per se, but has a PhD in computational chemistry. And I think that sums up some of the interesting changes and dynamics that we're going through, is that the move that we're going into is very much about the information age <laughs> in its simplistic form, but how things are really changing in this space. And then finally, there's me. Um, so I'm Jonathan Palmer. I head up our product strategy for our warehousing uh, area in, uh, in the Oracle Health Sciences Business Unit. Uh, I've been around in the industry for well, get nearly, nearly 30 years, 25 plus years. Um, started off in uh, Quintiles. It was a small CRO. Some of you may have heard of Quintiles. Uh, that got too big for me, so I joined a small CRO called Paroxel. Um, that got too big. So I let, joined a massive corporate called Oracle. And I've been doing clinical trial stuff there, and I did a brief holiday to IBM, uh, and that was quite fun, and then came back to Oracle, and uh, the rest is history. So that's me. Uh, so let's just go into the session. So I'm going to give you an overview of really some of the things that are happening both in cloud, big data, give you some uh, ideas about opportunities and visions. And then really that's going to dovetail into Tom's presentation, who's going to sort of drill down to the next level of detail, certainly give you some of his views and, and thoughts about this particular space. And then we're going to end uh, with Victor, who's really going to not only uh, reiterate some of those messages, but also sort of tell you how to do that more from a technology perspective and an implementation perspective. So I'll talk to you really in kind of three segments, really what's, uh, what's out there in terms of challenges and opportunities, talk about the cloud, big data, and a, and a summary. So I try to think about, you know, the, the, the picture of the evolution of man. I'm trying to draw that picture here. And it's interesting here that we start off, you know, certainly my career back in around the early 90s of this thing called the CRF, this paper document. And then somebody had this amazing idea to create EDC, which was a revolutionary thing. And I go back to the man on the moon yesterday. In 1969, all these guys got on the moon, and that's like 40 years ago, um, w and with some amazing technology. And actually back here, we've moved from paper to EDC, which is amazing technology or not, as the case may be. But we go from CRF to EDC, and then the cloud came along. So the cloud is interesting in that it then created opportunities for us all to collaborate, integrate, and, and really have a different ways of working. And then a, another evolution, which has been going on for many years now, but is, is certainly starting to mature and getting significant value out of it, is the overall omics and genomics and proteomics area. Um, which is really now the science is taking shape, but also combine that with significant compute uh, capabilities starts to change the way that we can interact with information. And then finally, just in this life cycle that I've drawn out here is devices. And whatever a device means to you, that's really to me is about getting data now, real-time data, the ability to have streaming data impacting your processes, your patients, your clinical trials, and the ability to do something with that data. But the question is, what do you do with it? How do you capture that data, when and why? So I'm just trying to show you here this evolution from certainly, again, in sort of 25, 30 years I've been around, from paper through to what we've got now, 
And this is really a significant change in the way that we're going to handle data and interact with it. If we look at today's R&D process, um, it's pretty linear, and this should be no surprise for any of you. We start off really um, with a uh, planning phase, study setup, conduct. It goes on for many years, and it goes on for 10, 12 years. Um, you know, and we obviously know it takes several billion dollars to get a drug to market. So it's pretty linear, it takes a long time, um, it's not very iterative in many ways. But we do see some trends in reiterating what I just mentioned. So we have areas such as genome sequencing, so the price of sequencing has come down significantly. We've got the opportunity for things like real-world data. This is another area that's also helping us with the cloud has started to enable some interactions with this. So combine the clinical data that was our uh, previous sphere of data was just the CRF data, which is a tiny piece of data. Now you've got the opportunity to pull in data from third parties, from real world experiences, from outcomes, and start to combine that with your data. And that starts to give you some other thoughts and, and abilities to change the, the way therapies are developed. We've got aggregation analysis of big data, and we'll, this will really drill down again into some detail around this. But again, new technologies really allow us to explore different data and, and look for signals and patterns. Uh, and then there's an interesting one that more than half of clinical trials now involve a biomarker. And biomarkers are also fundamental to the way that clinical trials are being done now in the future. And again, very much focused around information. And that's critical to being able to uh, do these clinical trials in the future. Patient stratification is another area which, as we move into the personalized medicine space, uh, is, is fundamental, where we're going away from this big, big bang approach where you have a big blockbuster drug, which basically you're just firing at patients and with the hope that it might work, uh, to personalized medicine, which is targeted for individual ge ge genome uh, um, signs and, and, and markers um, to allow you to really uh, uh, respond to that particular therapy. And then finally, we've got things like cloud, cloud technologies to, to enable.